Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and I'm an engineer here at NetApp. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about web scraping and Python, and then we're going to build in a small automation program that combines the two. Don't worry if you're unfamiliar with coding, Python, or web scraping. We're just going to review all the basics today. No prior knowledge about these topics is required, just an interest in data collection and the automation power of Python. Let's get started. Excelsior! So what exactly is web scraping? The internet is a vast trove of data, and there's tons of useful data out there relevant to you. It just may require some sifting to find it. Extracting data from the web is the definition of web scraping, and you already do it every day. Like when you check out the weather for the upcoming week. Or when you're looking up movie showtimes. Or just checking out your favorite author's books on Wikipedia. Let's start with an example. What if you had a school report where you wanted to gather all Pulitzer Prize winners in the fiction category since the 1970s? You might go to the Pulitzer Prize website to start. On the Pulitzer website, for each awards year, there is a page, and for each page there is a fiction winner. For your research, you would record the winner in a file somewhere and move on to the next year's page, repeating this process 49 more times to get every year's winner since 1970. What you're doing in this example, extracting data from a website, is web scraping. But it's a manual process. It's time consuming, tedious, and error prone to go page by page, finding the winner of the right category and writing it down correctly. What if after forgetting to year 1997, you aren't paying too much attention and accidentally recorded the nonfiction winner? Oh no! Is there something we could do better? What if you could write a computer program that visits each of these pages, locating the winner correctly and then recording it automatically? Even better, you don't even have to open a browser. This program could do it all for you, and it would take as fast as a computer could process it, which is much faster than your fingers, to be sure. This type of program is called automation, which is a fancy word for a computer program that does boring and tedious work for us. While we are interested in the data that we are web scraping, the process of gathering it maybe isn't so interesting. It's long, tedious, and we could mess something up. So we write automation to do the web scraping for us. The potential uses for web scraping are as infinite as the web itself. It doesn't just have to be for school research. Anything you'd potentially want data about could be turned into a web scraping project. Want to quickly find out all the hashtags your favorite celebrities are using on Twitter? What about a script that comes through Amazon for specific products that are on sale? You could automate a web scraper to generate this data for you on the fly. For instance, I like to order food through Postmates, which has rotating deals on different menu items. And today, I'm going to write a small program that scrapes that website for restaurant deals near me. Let's get started. Let's say I'm completely new to computer programming, maybe like you. I've never coded before. How would I automate anything? That's where the programming language Python can come to the rescue. Python is a programming language designed to be easy to install, easy to understand, and supported by a worldwide community of users and creators all eager to help. It's perfect for our first web scraping project. From here on out, I'll be walking through installing Python, writing our first script, installing our web scraping libraries, and then finally writing our web scraping project. If you are following along, feel free to pause the video as necessary. You will always have access to this video and can work through the steps at your own pace. If you get stuck at any point, I encourage you to use internet resources to help with your problem. The Python community is large and helpful, and will likely have the answer to your question. I will link to some helpful resources in the description below this video. If you have questions for me, or anyone with the NetApp YWIT team, ask a parent or guardian to email your question to ngywitquestions at netapp.com, and we'll do our best to help. To begin our project, we'll need to install Python on our computer. From python.org, find the full list of Python installers for every version. You can find this by clicking the Downloads tab, then following the link titled View the Full List of Downloads. For this exercise, we are going to use Python version 3.7.9. From this page, we will download the Python installer. Depending on your operating system, Windows or Mac, you will need to select the appropriate installer. When the file is downloaded, run the installer. 
If you're on Windows, make extra sure that you check the box that says Add Python 3.7 to Path. On Mac, this step is unnecessary. Walk through the installer prompts and wait for it to finish running. After it's finished installing, you should be able to find the Python 3.7 application in your Start menu if you're using Windows, or in your Applications menu if you're using Mac. We will now write our first Python program. A basic Python program is simply a text file that we fill with a series of instructions or code that we want Python to perform. This file is often called a module or a script. When we are ready to execute our Python program, we give this script to the Python interpreter, which tells the computer to execute the instructions you just wrote. To write our first script, we will use a tool called idle that came installed with Python. Idle will help us write, edit, and execute our script. You can find idle using the start menu on Windows or the finder in Mac. Let's open it up now. Once idle is open, we can begin writing our script by clicking on the file menu in the top left and selecting New File. In the text editor window that appears, let's type the following lines. For the first line, type name space equal space input open parentheses quotation mark what is your name quotation mark close parentheses. On the second line, type print open parentheses quotation mark hello quotation mark, space plus sign, space name, closing parentheses. Let's talk about what we just wrote. By putting the sentence, what is your name, in quotation marks, we are indicating that this is a Python data type known as a string. A string is simply a sequence of characters that Python can use to do different things. Notice our string is inside a parentheses of something called input. Input is a Python function. A function takes Python data types as input and returns a value. In this case, the input function takes a string, which is our sentence, and prints it to the screen. It will then wait for the user to write something on the keyboard and press the Enter key. Finally, the input function saves what the user entered and returns it. Notice on the left side of this line we have written name. This is a variable. A variable is simply a container for storing data values so that we can reference them later. The equal sign is what's known as assignment. It indicates that we are storing the result of what's on the right side of the equal sign to the variable on its left side. In this instance, we are storing the return value of the input function to the name variable. The second line contains a print function. Print is another Python function which takes a string as input and writes that string to the screen. Inside the print function, you can see that we have something interesting going on. We have one string, hello, and then an addition sign, and then our variable, name. What's happening here is called concatenation. Concatenation is simply a fancy word for joining two strings together as one. The addition sign between two strings will concatenate them together, as in this example with sun and flower. In the second line of our script, we are concatenating the string hello to our variable name, which contains a string and then printing that value to the screen. Okay, now that we've reviewed our script, let's finally run it. To run your script, you must save it first. Next, we'll click Run, Run Module, and a new window will appear. Notice our question, what is your name, appears in that window. Let's give it an answer. Type your name and press enter to see the result. Congratulations, you've written your first Python program. You're a coder now. Now that we have our first Python program under our belts, how do we begin web scraping? If you remember, I wanted to write a program that looks for deals on food from Postmates. So let's start there. In the address bar of a web browser, type www.postmates.com forward slash delivery hyphen near hyphen me.
we will be looking for the city closest to you to find nearby restaurants. I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so I will find it in the list and follow the link. This link takes us to the web page that we will be web scraping with our Python script. Our Python script needs to be able to read from this web page in order to look for new deals on food. So how do we do this? We will need to use a Python library called requests. A Python library is helpful code that the community has written in a way that others can easily use in their own Python scripts. We will be using a tool called pip to install the requests library so that we can use it in our own script. When we installed Python, pip was installed automatically alongside it. And we can invoke pip with a simple command. On the Windows operating system, we will open up the command prompt by typing command prompt into the start menu. On macOS, you will open up the equivalent application called terminal, which you can find with the finder. Once your command prompt or terminal is open, simply type the following command to install the request library. pip install requests. The command is the same on Windows or Mac. While we are here, let's install one more library that we will need later on. Type the following command. pip install beautiful soup 4. We'll talk more about what beautiful soup does later. Before we use the request library in our script, let's return to the Postmates web page that you will be scraping and copy the URL in the address bar. We will use that in a moment. Return to your script in idle and delete our old lines of code. We won't need them anymore. At the top of the script, type import requests. This line tells Python we want to use the request library we just installed. Next, type the following line. URL equals quotation mark, then paste the URL that you copied earlier. Close quotation mark. We will use the string variable we just declared in a second. On the third line, type page equal requests dot get URL. What we have done here is called the get function provided by the request library with the syntax request dot get and provided the URL to the web page by passing it our URL variable that we declared above. By calling the get function, the request library will access the web page at our URL and save it to our page variable. The page variable holds a special type data type known as an object which is a subject that's a little more advanced than what we need to tackle today. Just know that it is a special data type that has functions and properties used to examine the web page that we just accessed. On the fourth line, type the following. Print page.text. This will print out the page that we just accessed with requests. Now save the script and click Run, Run Module. Your script may take a bit to run as it is processing a lot of text. When it's completed, you'll see a button that says squeezed text, and it looks like this. If you double click that button, you'll notice a ton of scary looking text, but don't worry, this is called HTML. It's a language used to write the web pages you visit every day. Your browser takes the HTML it receives from the URL that we provided and turns it into the pretty web page that we are scraping from. HTML is a language that organizes all the content of a web page into different elements and various attributes so that it can be parsed and rendered by the browser. All of the content of this web page is in that messy block of text our script found, including our deals on food. So how can we parse through it? This is where we will use the Beautiful Soup library that we installed earlier with pip. Beautiful Soup is a Python library for pulling data out of HTML, and we will use it to find all the elements on the page related to our free food deals. Beautiful Soup is a parser. A parser takes in the messy web page content we scraped earlier with requests and then organizes it into HTML objects that we can search through easily. But before we can use it, we need to know what HTML elements we are looking for. On the Postmates page, let's try to find an example. Let's say we are looking for free delivery. There's one. This restaurant has free delivery, so how would I find it in HTML? We can use the Chrome browser to quickly find out information about content on the page. If we right-click where it says Free Delivery, we will get an option called Inspect. 
After clicking Inspect, your browser will show you the HTML element of the content on the right side of the screen. According to the HTML, the text Free Delivery is located inside a span element. This is information that we will use in combination with Beautiful Soup to locate this element in our script. Return to your script and below where you've written Import Request, type from BS4 import beautiful soup. Make sure that the B and S in beautiful soup are capitalized. Importing this will allow our code to use beautiful soup to parse the content from the Postmates web page. Next, replace the line where we had print page.text with this new line. Type soup equal beautiful soup open parentheses page.text comma open quotation mark html dot parser close quotation mark close parentheses what we have done on this line is create a beautiful soup object called soup using the web page content we gathered with requests above this beautiful soup object which we have named soup holds all the content of our web page in an easy to search data structure Remember that we are looking for span elements because they contained the text free delivery. We will now harness the power of Beautiful Soup to do just that. On the following line, type spans equal soup dot find underscore all open parentheses open quotation mark span close quotation mark close parentheses. What we are doing here is using the find all method of our soup object and telling it to look for all span elements in the HTML web page. We will search through these later to find the text free delivery. We now have a list of all the span elements from the page, but there were thousands of them. How do we find the ones we want? We will use a concept in Python known as iteration, which is a fancy way to say that we will one by one move through each item in a list. On the next line, type for span in spans colon. What does this line mean? Well first it tells Python that we are going to iterate through each span element in the list of span elements we stored in our spans variable. Any indented lines of code we type after this colon will execute for each span element in the list. For each span element we want to check if it contains the text free delivery. To do this we need to make sure that our next line is indented any indented lines following the colon above is code that will execute each time we iterate through our list. After the indentation, type the following line. If span dot string and quotation mark free delivery quotation mark in span dot string lower open parentheses close parentheses colon. This line is a bit complicated, but I'll try to break it down. We are using in Python what is known as an if statement. An if statement checks a condition, and if that condition is true, any indented code following it will execute. Anytime that condition is not true, the indented code following it will be skipped. In our case, our if statement is checking to see if the span element has a string, because some of them don't, and that the string contains the text free delivery. Remember, we are, inside, we are indented inside the for statement we wrote above, which means that this if statement will check each span element to see if it contains a text free delivery. Okay, we're almost done. We've requested the page, parsed it, iterated through every span element, and found the ones containing the text free delivery. Great, but there's one last hurdle we need to jump. The span element we found only contains the text free delivery. How can our script identify which restaurant the deal is actually for? Let's refer back to inspecting the Postmates webpage to see if we can find a way. When looking at the HTML with Chrome's inspector, we see that our free delivery span element is actually inside another div element. This is because in HTML, elements can be nested inside one another. If you're especially eagle-eyed, you might notice that our free delivery span element is deeply nested inside another div element that also contains the name of the restaurant. Let's take a closer look. Here's a snippet of the HTML that should be a little bit easier to read. Notice our span element is nested inside this div element. 
In this relationship, we call the div element the parent and the span element the child because it is nested inside. Notice the parent div is nested inside another div element, which is in turn nested in an anchor element. Take note that this anchor element is the great grandparent of the free delivery span element that we found earlier. This anchor element contains all other elements with information about the restaurant, and we will use Beautiful Soup to access it and print that information out. Beautiful Soup lets us navigate the relationship of the different HTML elements easily, and we will utilize this to print out information about the restaurant. Indent the next line after the if statement, because we only want to print out information on the restaurant if it has free delivery. Then type print, open parentheses, span dot parent dot parent dot parent dot text, close parentheses. Remember that anchor element from earlier? It was the great grandparent of the free delivery span we were looking for. Notice how we articulate that relationship in this line by typing span dot parent dot parent dot parent or great grandparent. Our script is finally finished. Thanks for hanging in there. Let's save it and run it to see the results. Whoa, look at that! Not only did it find the restaurant that we were looking for earlier, it found some others as well and printed them all out. So that's it. Congratulations, you're a web scraper and coder now, and don't let anyone tell you different. We covered a ton of ground in this video. You learned how to install Python, how to install libraries with pip, how to make requests and parse HTML, all in like what, 20 minutes? If you are feeling overwhelmed, it is nothing to be ashamed of. Coding is challenging for everyone at any age or experience level. There is just always something you don't know and always more to learn. Never be afraid to ask for help and enjoy the journey of learning. Thanks for watching.